we are going to be planning a sixth grade uh, math lesson and this particular lesson comes from module two topic a lesson eight if you would like to follow along with me um, in planning this lesson um, here's a list of some of the materials that you're going to need um, you're going to need the table of contents for this module um, the module overview the topic overview um, some of the exit tickets for this topic and topic A is lessons one through eight. Um, and you're also going to need the actual lesson itself, the teacher edition, and then also the student work pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my document camera um, and we're gonna work off of this for a bit. So I always start with my table of contents just to give me an idea of where my lesson is within the module. So I can see that lesson eight, which is the lesson I'm gonna be planning is the last lesson in topic A. That just kind of gives me an idea in terms of the progression so that I know what students have done before and then what students will be doing after that. Once I have an idea of where my lesson is, I will always, always, always read the module and topic overviews. Um, I like to see this just because it gives me an idea of the priority standards that are taught within the lesson. Uh, it gives me some of the vocabulary that I'm going to need. So for this particular one, there's partitive and measurement division. It also gives me some of the different strategies that are used within the module. Um, and then it also lets me know how many actual lessons there are. So this module has 19 lessons and six of those um, days are actually um, reserved for mid and end of module assessments. And so I know kind of where this module will be going. Um, I also do like the fact that it kind of links it up to some of the past um, standards the students have worked with. So here it's letting me know that in grades four and five, students use concrete models, pictorial representations and properties to divide whole numbers. And so we're gonna take that and then start working with our students um, so that they can become more efficient with that standard algorithm at the end of this module. So I kind of like to just read through that. And then the topic overview just gives me a little bit more details in terms of that specific lesson. So here it tells me that in topic A, students are going to be extending their previous understanding. So I know that students have some kind of base understanding with fraction divisions, um, but we're gonna be extending that to fractions divided by fractions. It also lets me know the different visual modules. So we're gonna be using bar diagrams, tape diagrams, arrays, and number line diagrams. And so that gives me an idea of where we're going. So once I have an idea of where my lesson is going, the next thing I always do is I solve all of my exit tickets. So topic A, like I said, was lessons one through eight. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video now so that you can solve them, um, feel free to do that. I've already solved them myself. And so you can see that I actually go through every single exit ticket and I solve the problems the way that I want my students to solve them or how I expect my students to solve them. So if I want them to draw a tape diagram, I make sure that I draw that. If I expect them to write their answer in a sentence form, I make sure to do that. And I always label the way that I expect my students to do that. I just like to do this because for me, the exit ticket is kind of um, where I expect my students to be at the end of the lesson. And so it just gives me an idea of where I need to head and what I need to clarify with my students. And so as I go through and solve it, I can come up with some of the misconceptions that my students might have within the lessons um, or any silly mistakes that they might make um, while working on this. And so here is my exit ticket for the one lesson that we're gonna be working with, which is lesson eight. And I can see that there was four questions. And so once I get down to actually planning the specific lesson, um, I may consider um, bringing this down to just solving one problem versus the four for that class. So once my exit tickets are done, then it's time to actually work on my lesson. So I start with the student pages. And the first thing I do is I start solving all the problems that my students are going to have to do. So for this specific, this first one, there's example one, there's A and B. And so I solved them out the way that I ex expect my students to solve it. This one's a word problem. And so there's a word sentence to go along with it. This one is just calculating the quotient. So I went ahead and did that the way that my students are expected to solve it. Um, and then the, this specific lesson has a memory game that my students are going to be working with. Immediately when I saw this, um, I decided that that's a whole lot of questions. And so I timed myself. And so with me and my experience, it took me 10 minutes to solve all of these problems. And that's, you know, me knowing all of this and having a pretty a clear understanding of how to divide fractions. And so I already know that my students um, are going to take a whole lot longer if I expect them to do all this. As I was solving some of these, um, you may notice some of the circles and then some of these lines. Um, as soon as I got to G, I decided, yeah, there's no way I'm going to expect my students to do this problem. The numbers are too large. Um, they're going to get confused. They already struggle with their multiplication a little bit. And so I'm not even going to go there. Same thing happened when I got to K. 
um, just because my students are having to then multiply 13 times 18. And that just, um, for my specific students that I'm going to be working with, that's just unrealistic because they already struggle with multiplication. So I immediately knew that J and K, I mean, G, G and K were not going to work. Um, and then the ones that I put the circles on, those are some that I thought, yeah, those would be good. And it would show me if my students know what they're doing. So once I go through the classwork, I then go through the problem set. And again, for sixth grade, the problem set is the homework. And so I immediately, again, I start working every single problem out. And you can see those X's again, because I decided there's no way. My students are not going to 13 times seven and that 19 times the 10 or the 19 times the five, if they cross cancel, those are already big numbers. And so I'm not even gonna go there. And so I immediately crossed off some. Um, I did like number one, and then I put a maybe for number four, depending on how I decide my lesson is going to go. So once I have that, then it's time to get into um, my actual teaching portion of the lesson. Um, for this specific lesson, I do have a 45 minute block. And so I'm going to keep that 45 minute block in mind as I'm planning my lesson. So the first thing I do is I go through my classwork and I decide um, which portions of that classwork I'm going to do. For this specific lesson, there was only the the first example and then they go right into that memory game and so what I've decided to do is instead of spending 12 minutes I'm actually going to spend six minutes on 1a um, and then I'm actually going to have them do 1b but we'll probably spend a little bit less time so I'm thinking about four minutes for that second one so I think that classwork can be done in 10 minutes this is the whole group instruction that I'm going to be doing with them then what I've decided I'm going to do is instead of doing that memory game, because that's going to take way too long, there's too many problems. Um, and honestly, I, I just want to see if my kids can divide fractions. I, I don't need to see whether their memory is there or not. And so what I've decided to do is I'm going to just pick and choose some of these problems and I'm going to embed a cake in structure into my class. So my students will do some kind of numbered heads together strategy. Um, they'll work together in maybe two to three problems. Um, together and then they'll come up with answers and then we'll discuss those whole group. So that's kind of how I'm going to go about just because when I solved this, some of these problems which is too difficult, I just, um, I know it's going to be hard for my kids and so I'm not going to go there. Um, my closing and my exit ticket, I'm leaving to eight minutes and so for my, for my closing, I am going to ask this question. I do want my students to discuss the similarities and the differences of dividing a fraction by a fraction and a fraction by a mixed number. I want them to really talk about how that was different. Um, and then for that exit ticket, like I mentioned earlier, there was those four problems. And so here's the exit ticket again, um, but I'm going to go ahead and pull it up, the one that I've already got solved. And so for this exit ticket here, there was these, um, there's these four problems. Um, I'm not gonna do all of them with my students. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and have them solve one. I think this one, three fourths divided by 26 fifths, which is what it ends up being, I think is a decent number. Three fourths times five over 26. I think they can do four times 26. And so I'm gonna go ahead and have them do number one for that exit ticket. I think realistically they can solve the one in those four minutes. And so my exit ticket will be just the one problem. So exit ticket will be the one problem. I'll keep it to four minutes. Closing, we'll talk about this question and I'll keep it to those four minutes as well. Um, normally in sixth grade, there's no fluencies, um, but I know that my students need some of that fluency work. And so what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to embed a fluency. One will be dividing fractions, which is yesterday's lesson. And so we'll spend six minutes um, reviewing what we did yesterday with dividing fractions. And then we're gonna spend an additional four minutes um, changing mixed fractions into improper fractions. And so I'm gonna embed a 10 minute fluency. My classwork, like I said earlier, examples 1A and 1B will take me about 10 minutes to do whole group. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and embed a number of heads together. And so if I remove my eight minutes of closing and exit ticket, that leaves me 17 minutes for this um, activity. And so I'm going to go ahead and put three problems knowing that we might not get to that third one, depending on how my 17 minutes are going. And so that's kind of how I go about planning my lesson. So I'm adding a fluency activity that's not part of the Eureka Math lesson, and I'm substituting the memory game for a numbered heads. Um, and again, that's changing it from the Eureka Math lesson itself. Everything else I'm keeping pretty much the same. And again, like I said, this lesson is just a 45 minute block. So I really had to dwindle down um, what I'm doing for this actual lesson. 
So once I have that, I always like to set up my lessons. And so this is the final product. So like I said, we're going to be doing um, dividing fractions as a quick warm up. So here's the first one. And this problem is actually the exit ticket from yesterday's um, lesson. So I want to see if they'll catch on to that and see if um, they perform the same a day later with that exit ticket. Um, and then I'm going to add a few more. So here's 3 fourths divided by 1 eighth, 3 fourths divided by 2 eighths, and then 2 fifths divided by 1 eighth. And then once we do those problems, we're going to go ahead and get into um, move, rewriting some mixed numbers into um, improper fractions or fractions greater than one. And so I'm giving them about four examples on that. Once we're doing that, then we'll get into example one. I went ahead and highlighted the word of because they were struggling with that word yesterday and making sense of that in terms of multiplication. So I want to make sure that they um, catch on to that and that they pay attention to that as we're working through this problem. And then example 1b is here. I just want them to be able to calculate the quotient. Once we're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce numbered heads together to my students. Um, I'm going to give them, I'm going to number them off one through five in their tables. And then I'm also going to be numbering their tables. There's a total of eight tables in the class. And so I'm going to go ahead and give them a question to work on. They're each going to have some time individually to work on it. And then they'll have a few more minutes to um, put their heads together to ensure that all members in the, in the group can uh, answer the question. And then I'm going to go ahead and call a few examples. So this is the first one. So if they're in tables one through four, they'll work on this first question. Tables five through eight will work on the second question. That way we have two examples to share out. And then I'll go ahead and give them that second question. And then depending on how my 17 minutes are going for this portion of the lesson, um, we may or may not get into this third question. Once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and get into the student debrief. I really want to focus on the similarities and the differences from the problems that we did today versus the ones that we did yesterday. And then we'll get into the exit ticket. And like I said, they're only going to be working on that number one, and they're going to get exactly four minutes to turn this in, and then we'll be done. So that's kind of how I plan a lesson. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, teach this lesson, and then I'll let you guys know how it goes. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.